as you saw in the main slide, my name's Aaron Stiles. I'm a game developer. I was a tape student for two years in which I made two games for the curriculum. Then a professional at Infinite Interactive for one year where I made, worked on three games. Um, then went indie for a year where I made one fairly average game. And now I'm studying here at Monash, though not this campus, at the Caulfield campus. And I made six games last over summer and last semester. Uh, all Flash games are available on Congregate and have had a collection of over 300,000 plays. So I kind of know a little bit about making really small games, even if they're not that good. And I've got more people coming in. <laughs> um, so we'll move on. So this is the first step out of the ten. I'm going to get through this fairly quickly, I think, and then we might have a discussion afterwards or questions and answers. But the first idea thing is to come up with the idea. Uh, just any idea that you want to make a game of. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you do want something kind of simple, though. It, um, the simpler the better. Um, it's okay to copy games, but you really want to embellish them. Um, it's pointless to actually just copy a game without making more, adding on to it. Okay. So once you've come up with the idea, it's time to get into step two, which is just go away. Go away from your computer. Just play some other games, any games at all, or maybe even go outside. Yes, oh, go outside. But it's actually really important to go outside because you get all that lovely vitamin D. While you're doing all these things, you want to keep thinking about your game idea. Just have, always have it in the back of your mind. Um, as you do these other experiences, like going outside or playing other games, um, keep thinking about your game and what you've learned from either, you know, doing other stuff or playing other games. Um, see how that could maybe fit into your game. Now, the next thing... Oh, hang on. <laughs> What you need to do is talk about it with others. I forgot about that very important point. You, if you have friends that are also developing games, or even if they're not, um, just talk about your game with them and bounce ideas off them. Communication is very important, both in industry and out of it. A lot of my better games were made either with friends or because I was talking to friends. <laughs> Step three is now to write it down. It's very important to get what's up in here in your head down onto something that you can look back later and reference. <laughs> There's something that goes with this. What you write down doesn't have to be your final game design. It's just something that you have that you can reference later. It's okay to move away from what you put down there, but you definitely need to have something written down. <laughs> and it doesn't Need, as I said, it doesn't need to be the final thing. Um, just need to have something to work off. It doesn't need to be serious, hence why I got that. Okay. Um, it doesn't even need to be large blocks of text. As you can see here, this is a simple screen by screen, by screen um, representation with a little um, text underneath to say what it is. This is from uh, GameStorm, which is a Tumblr account put up by Chevy Ray Johnson. And basically, game devs who are working on games or have finished games put up their design art and concept art onto this side, and it's a really good idea to see how other people make their games. Now we move on to step four, which is the big point. Just ignore your original idea. It is going to be way too big for you to do, no matter what you pick, no matter how small you've made your original idea, apart from if you're just simply copying Pong it's going to be way too big for you to implement as your first game. I seriously say it's going to be way too big, much like this burger. <laughs> How can you say it looks so good? It's like maybe a third of that or a quarter of that might be a nice burger. The big thing with having written it down and then ignoring it is that you can come back to it later and make that game after your first, second or third game. Once you have the experience to make your big grand idea. So step five, this is where we actually really start making your first game, is to essentially copy it. Copy it from another game, an older game preferably. As I said, an older game. Um, yeah. 
So some of the better games to copy from, uh, Pong, Space Invaders, Super Mario Brothers as a general platform idea. Each of these games are fairly simple to make with the tools that are out now. Um, I'm going to be picking Space Invaders and we're going to go through a quick dissection of it as we analyze the game. So this is Space Invaders. First we need to do is pick out the actors. Now, this is where we get some interaction in. Who wants to pick out the actors here? Just yell them out. Aliens. Yep, I aliens. I say the blocks of all the actors because they do something. What do you mean the blocks? The cover. cover? Yep. Aliens, cover, what else? The ship, the ship, the, ship, the player ship, UFO. the UFO, and there's three others. Score, Score. Score. good. Lives. Lives, yep, and? Yep, that's it. So we'll go through them. Um, obviously the player, one of the most important parts or actors of any game. Then you have the enemy, the base enemy in this case being the aliens. The UFO, which is high scoring but not dangerous. The cover, which is a protection. Um, the bullets, both for aliens and the humans, and the score and the lives. I wasn't actually expecting either, any of you to get those two. That's awesome. So once we've picked out the actors, what we need to do is pick out the actions. So we've got the alien movement. They go across, down, across, down, and keep going there until they reach the bottom. The UFO movement comes in from either side. The player movement is controlled by arrows, left and right. The player shoots, controlled by a button, and the bullet movement, up and down. Pretty all self-explanatory, I'm sure you all would have picked that. Then we pick out the interactions. This is one of my very few slides full of text. But basically you need to map out what happens when things do stuff with each other. So bullet versus invader, both dies in addition to score, and I'm sure you can read all the rest of it. Um, this is very uh, one of the bigger steps in analyzing a game is figuring out the interactions because that is essentially what you then code. And then you need to pick out the polish. Polish being sound effects, visual effects. I've split them up here. Uh, again, because Space Invaders is a fairly simple game, it's fairly easy to pick out what polish there is. Um, some of the ones that people will, I thought would not get is the um, explosions on an Invader UFO or player and the bullet animation for enemies. Um, there's other, if you were wanting to make Space Invaders and expand, you could add particle effects for the explosions, whereas the original um, was original Space Invaders was just a simple sprite, a little star. So after the analysis, you need to pick a tech. This is where it gets fun. Right now, it is a really good time for amateur game creators to get started out. Um, if you can program, um, stick to the program that, um, programming language that you're used to unless you're really advanced with that and want to start picking up another one. But for the basics, there's this new one out called Stencil. This is done mainly in Java and a bit of Flash and creates actual Flash games that you could pop up onto, congregate new grounds, new website, anything. This Blackberry can play Flash. Um, it cr it, its coding is done using a language that was invented at MIT that uses snap-in blocks and is really, really simple to use. You can also buy pre-generated um, AI scripts and movement scripts um, from a store, though a lot of them are free. Um, if you're starting out, this would be a really good place to start. Um, soon they're coming up with an exporter to iOS, for anybody that has iPhones. Um, it's a really good tool. I've played with it, but haven't made use of it for any of my games because what I do is a sort of step beyond this. Another one for basics is Game Maker, which I'm sure most of you heard of. Um, Game Maker 8.1 is out, it's free, much like our stencil is free as well, I should say. Um, if you get the pro version, then you can create commercial games and eventually there will be an iOS port for that as well. Um, when I did my TAFE course, one of my friends, we had to do a uh, big project at the end of the course, and one of my friends used Game Maker to make a top-down shooter with lots of story, and it was really, really good looking. So it isn't just for very basic games, you can make very um, big games as well. Now for those of you with a little bit more coding experience and going into a different language, um, Flixel is a really good one. It's for ActionScript 3, which again is Flash. A lot of the things I'm doing here for big wide audiences through um, web or um, mobile devices. Flixel, because it's Flash and with the new Air 2.7, can be put out onto iOS, Android, Windows, the Blackberry, and also onto the web. 
Um, Flixel is actually really good because it um, works a lot like most game engines do. So it's like um, Call of Duty and well, pretty much every single game works the same engine, works the same way as Flixel does. Or I should say it's the other way around because it's a standard in the industry. And of course Unity, which I'm sure most of you at least have heard about, um, good for making 3D games. Um, it uses a couple of different languages to do its scripting, a bit hard to get into, but um, if you can understand its workflow then it is really, really powerful. And then XNA, if you know C Sharp, um, might have some, I know uh, quite a few high schools have been picking up C Sharp as their base programming language for computer science. So if you already know that, then XNA is a good step up if you want to keep programming in that language, but then Unity also does C Sharp. Okay, so once you've picked out your tech, join a community. It's a really important step to have people that are knowledgeable about games that you can interact with. TIG source forums is a really good place, really um, beginner friendly. You ask a question there, it will be answered within three or four hours, depending. Um, and it covers like every single language you can think of. Um, another one that's just happened is the Super Friendship Club is really awesome. Again, um, for indie game devs, it's just started out and it's really friendly. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's super friendly, you could say. <laughs> um, I haven't actually spent that much time on there, but what I've seen, again, you ask a question and somebody who is very knowledgeable will most likely answer it within a couple of hours or the question has already been asked and you just find the answer there. And then you have... Um, other meetups. So this is the a picture from IGDA Melbourne. They meet every second Tuesday of the month, I think it is now. Next one is tomorrow night. It's generally for 18s and over only because we meet at this place called Ten Pound Bend, which is a pub kind of. But you know, once you reach over 18, or even if you're under, just sneak in. But don't tell them I said that. <laughs> um, again, this is where a lot of indies and even some professionals wind up and talk about whatever they're working on. If you want to get into the industry, I would suggest going to places like this. That is how I got into Infinite Interactive. I just kept going to events like this, and eventually they said, hey, you come to events like this, you should know a little bit of stuff. Why not? We're going to hire you. Um, and also, find uh, go, go back. Um, all of those uh, texts that I told, talked about before all have their own communities that, again, very active, especially Flixel and Stencil. Um, the communities are amazingly active. Again, ask a question. If it hasn't been asked before, it'll be answered in a couple of hours. And that, that kind of thing is very invaluable when you're making your first game and learning how to program. I know it was for me. So now you get on to making the game. Most games will have a discrete starting point. So for, in my case of Space Invaders, mine would be getting the aliens to move. That would be the first point that I would start making a Space Invaders game. Um, the design and analysis that you went through before um, gives a really good recipe for um, making the game. Once you start making the game, literally just make little small things and celebrate them. You've made something. It's awesome. Um, if you can't enjoy making the little things, then it's going to be hard to complete a full game. Don't worry about doing it wrong. It doesn't matter if you do it right or wrong, just as long as you have something finished to show at the end. And then the final one, which I've run through really quickly it seems, it doesn't matter, is to show it off. It's a big thing to show it off to people. Create a thread in one of the communities that you've found and literally just post up a thread. It's like, I'm making this game, how awesome is it? Keep posting up screenshots whenever you make and add something. It's not going to piss people off. If they don't want to read it, they're just not going to read it. But there will be somebody there who will. Um, and sh as I said, show it off and tell it to people around you as well. We've got a good community right here from Computer Games Bootcamp. Um, stay in contact through the Facebook group. And if you make something, post it up there. And I'm sure that other people will see it and maybe even give you a little bit of guidance on how to do it. Just constantly, as you're making stuff, show it off to people. That will pot potentially help get you through um, any hurdles that you come across when making it. <laughs> And always listen to people that have a bit more experience with you. Don't necessarily take under consideration what they say, but listen to them, because you'll hurt their ego if you don't. 
Um, there, I was going to say something about um, listen to others and their feedback, but that's for another talk. It's quite a big um, topic, actually implementing people's feedback, and it's a bit beyond the scope of what we're doing here. So the conclusion is, realistically, steps four to ten are what you are want to do for your first game. But steps one to three, and then six to ten, are really good for your consecutive games. Um, I can't think of the amount of games that I've just made up in here in my head just by um, thinking of an idea, the spark, and then going through my life and building upon it and then making a game that, um, yeah, some of my best games have come through that process rather than just, I have an idea, I must code it straight away. Um, so these are my contact details. We should do some discussion now about what, I don't know, if you have any questions, just fire away. Yo. Is, um, your I can put it up there. I can mostly put it up there right now. <laughs> yep. I can bring some up. Because um, my last six games have been Flash, they work amazingly well on my really crappy netbook. <laughs> yep. It's this thing that I did last time. Um, basically, I put up a list of ways that a character can die, and I got the people in the group to give me ideas for weapons. I was going to do it again, but I didn't have enough time to put it into my slide. <laughs> we could maybe go through that if you wanted. So here we go. This is my congregate page. Um, we'll play Flood of Eyes. This has to be one of the best looking games that I've done, and it still looks pretty dodgy, because I'm not an artist. <laughs> And hopefully it'll work well. So this, all of these games were done in Flixel. Um, actually, I'll get somebody else up to play it. Who wants to play it? Yep. <laughs> so it says, um, space to start, arrow keys left and right to move the paddle. And <laughs> I thought I did click on it. Yeah. There you go. So this game, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. There's no penalty for death. <laughs> Apart from losing any of the butterflies that you've caught. Uh, this game took me about 20 hours to make, but I literally I thought up of the do. idea. So what, you have to get them in the Just baskets? Yeah, you right? need to get them in baskets on the right-hand side. Right. Pun? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, as I said, it took me about 20 hours to make, but I literally thought up of the idea during my third week of second semester last year, didn't make a prototype until after exams, and then worked on it for the 20 hours of mid-January, I think. So the gestation period was months before I actually made anything. Any questions about this game? <laughs> so what's your process in terms of thinking of a game? Do you take your concept first, do you prototypes, and then how long do you spend doing iteration before you release Ouch. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just duck. I don't know what this is. Uh, so I was, how long do I spend doing iterations? What's my process? Yeah, so like, what, what are the so, blockings? The blockings. So I'll come up with an idea, then at a minimum I'll give myself a week of time to think about it and elaborate the idea, work it in my head, what's good, what's bad. I'll play games that are like it. So like this, there's a couple of Flash games like this. I literally spent a couple of weeks just playing Flash games like this on and off during lectures at uni. And maybe that's why I failed that semester. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at least a week of doing that, usually it's a month or so of doing that, thinking up that idea, other ideas, maybe even spinning them off into separate games. And then I'll create a simple block prototype. Literally, the initial graphics for this were just grey and coloured blocks before adding in the art. And then I um, got the basic game up and running in a day, I think, and then iterated on that, just changing variables, adding stuff, taking away stuff, for a good three weeks before I felt good enough that I just popped in the art and it was done. 
Uh, the game finishes at the end of the day, and once the last player dies or goes in. But apart from that, it just keeps looping over, and there's a day cycle for highest uh, score. I'm going to get that. <laughs> what are you going to get? The highest score, something. <laughs> I think the highest score for a day is around 60. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is tracked using Congregate's API, so um, there is a high score up on the leaderboards. <laughs> Rage quit. Um, we'll look at one of my others as well. Um, who wants to play this one? Yep. You can play the next one. So as it says there, it was for the Global Game Jam. Um, literally myself, another programmer, and a story writer did this in 48 hours. What do I do? Um, move around and kill everything. <laughs> so this is a kind of a reverse space invaders. We have your block of invaders up the top that are constantly raining down fire, and lots of things down the bottom to destroy. You have the humans that walk along, the basic stick figures that I just drew up in paint. And then you have the buildings that fire back and they're procedurally generated, um, just all in code. As you go along, there's um, tanks and missiles and a whole heap of other stuff that come along. And it said 48 hours, of which about 33 hours was actual development. Um, the rest was sleep. <laughs> yep, you're getting shot, but um, it's fine. You can kill this one pretty easy. <laughs> and you need to kill all the people as well. So yeah, 48 hours to make this game is an interesting experience. Um, not this weekend, but next weekend, I'll be also making a game in eight hours, which will be an experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, we split up this one. Um, we had about, an, uh, this was based around the theme of extinction. So that was the thing for the whole weekend, was to make a game based around Extinction. Um, we had, uh, myself and my friend who I'd worked with at Infinite Interactive, we got together in a group and tried to think up of an idea. We couldn't get one. Eventually this lady came along and said, hey, I need a group. And I was like, okay, well, we need an artist. And she said, well, I'm not an artist, but I do write stories. And I was like, how about this story, Reverse Space Invaders? I was like, yeah, we can work with that, I guess. And s Pardon? This is Lucy Temple. Yeah. And so, yeah, we took her idea, and me being designer and the other guy, programmer and the other guy being a programmer, sort of elaborated on that and came up with this idea of the reverse space invaders. Um, as soon as the go ahead to start coding went, we literally dove in. Um, I already had uh, all the space invaders of procedure generated too, just in code, using code rather than art assets. Um, already had that code, so I just plugged it into this game and then set about making their movements. Their movement right now obviously is not the Space Invaders general style of across, down, across, down. Um, it took me about 20 iterations to get the movement just right, how it is now, and it could still use a bit of polish, honestly. That took the good chunk of the first afternoon was just getting their movement right. Then I need uh, something for them to shoot. So I proceeded to do the buildings. That took most of the rest of the evening to do a lot of time was spent on getting the buildings just right and getting the movement of the uh, Space Invaders pretty good. And then it was just a rush during the last day to get all the rest of it in. Um, I think over the weekend I got about seven hours. Split between the two days. <laughs> so yeah, and then the tanks there just made in uh, paint shop or Photoshop or paint. I can't remember which one I used. Uh, would have been on the netbook, so it was most likely paint.net. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions about the talk? <laughs> yep. How much um, community feedback do you try to get into your game? Um, it depends on where the feedback's coming from. If it's from somebody that I know well, then I will obviously put a bit more impetus on their feedback than somebody that I don't know. Or if it's a really good idea, obviously. Um, a big thing with feedback, 
um, when you get people to play your game, um, some people will come back and say, um, hey, you should really add this. And that isn't the best way to get feedback. You generally, when people say, hey, you should add this or you should change this, it isn't the right way. What you need to do is listen to the people who say, hey, I think this is wrong. And then you need to figure out your own way of fixing that. Generally, the people who say, hey, you should add this, you should fix this, like this, um, don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and that is really important to having a cohesive feel to the game. So, um, yeah, generally, um, I try to get feedback of what is wrong and what they'd like different, but not the specific of what they would fix or what they want different. Even people who know their stuff, I generally just kind of, I listen to it, but I kind of ignore it. It's, as I said, it's a big topic, taking feedback, and is a bit beyond the scope, but um, yeah. And that's my advice, is to listen to the what's wrong, not the how to fix it. I know you're nearly dead. Fortunately, as you die, you actually get more powerful. <laughs> a lot more powerful. <laughs> you fire a lot faster, and they do more damage. <laughs> Yeah, that was just a really hacky um, design balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, 48 hours, come on. <laughs> Had enough? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seconds are awesome. I don't like showing off this one because it's really dodgy. This was my first Flash game. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Let's, let's go. So, there's this, uh, who here knows World of Goo? Yep. Good. Everybody knows World of Goo. You know that was uh, born out of the experimental gameplay project? Um, not of this game. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> um, so, the Experimental Gameplay Project. <laughs> um, each month, you get a theme that you're given to make a game of in for over seven days of development in the 30, 31 day month. The theme I chose to do was 10 seconds of game, or 10 seconds. So I decided, hey, I'll make a game. There will be 10 seconds of gameplay, then really boring and bad me talking to the player that will take five minutes throughout the whole game. So once he goes through this, um, there will literally be 2.5 seconds of a really crappy game <laughs> before it goes through another um, just block of text. Um, it actually did pretty well in the <laughs> um, in that month. Um, I think they don't actually rate them like one to one hundred, but it got a sizable chunk of views from the website. <laughs> Bored yet? <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't see your mouse on the screen. How do I know what to click on? Oh, you just click. Once it gets to the game, oh. it'll bring up uh, the mouse. Literally, those pictures I just took from my webcam and my Much netbook. Cool. This is all developed on my netbook. Oh. So you have 2.5 seconds to click as many blue blocks as possible. <laughs> now, into mission two. How long does this you last? picked the wrong game. Let's, um... <laughs> um, I really should have put in some metrics to see where they did quit. I went, uh, come back. I went off and then did this game on the back of that. It is one minute of the same kind so of is game. It, is it more talking? Less talking. No yeah. talking. Uh, what do we do here? Yeah. There you go. So now you actually get to see the game. <laughs> Um, this one, I literally took maybe two hours. Ah! Click, oh. damn it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so this is um, six Nick. sections of ten seconds each. <laughs> 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 so 
So you need to pick red again, but this time there'll be another colour! Ugh. Ugh. Um, overall, that first game, most of the time was spent actually thinking up of the narrative, of the actual um, text. And it took, I don't know, a whole day to get right. And it still isn't right. But not completely happy with that game, but it did what it was set out to do. And then this one, I just literally ripped out the game part of that and made it bigger. <laughs> and again, it's not really that good of a game. Um, I've made an XNA game. When I was working in industry, they were standalone Windows games. Currently, I'm working on a web and... It's hard to explain a web enabled, but for no. a desktop, web based, and mobile uh, game. Which I can actually talk about if you really want. Oh, no. Um, Unity. And then there might be a Flash game. So, what it is is a website you log into, and when you log in, you're given two weapons, two guns, a pistol and a rifle. Each of these are procedurally generated up on the server, and then using that data, the games then give you those weapons in game to shoot. And whether it's going to be top-down shooter or third-person shooter, I'm not 100% sure yet. But it's just the idea of, um, much like Team Fortress 2, you will get drops, random drops, of procedurally generated weapons, though, like Borderlands. So think of it as a mashup between Team Fortress 2 for the item drops, and then um, Borderlands for the weapon generation. Will Maybe. Uh, <laughs> most likely. I need to do some uh, money generation somewhere. No. Oh. So, and I... Hats are a good one because um, obviously they're not uh, enhancements making you better at the game, but then because it's completely random all the drops, um, that could be a way as well. It's just an idea that I had for a while and I've actually got the time to develop it now. <laughs> Having fun there? A lot of fun. <laughs> Much easier with the mouse. <laughs> oh. um, I wouldn't be so sure actually <laughs> if it would be much easier on mouse. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yay! Um, who is really good with their fingers? <laughs> ha ha ha! God, who wants to play this one? This is uh, my best. <laughs> this is my best performing game so far. Anyone? Yep. Come on. So there is a story behind this name. <laughs> um, once it gets into it. Okay. So what you need to do is R T Y F H V B N uh, the keys, yeah. and we'll figure out what to do. I'm sure. Um, no, it isn't that. It's just this. Once I find the end. Um, So this is a collection of eight one-button mini-games. So if he presses F, and then he presses F to jump, he will get points once that bar gets to the edge of the screen. It's pretty simple. We'll give it a couple of seconds. Bored? Yeah. Yeah. Just wait. <laughs> Uh-oh. And now another mini game comes up. And now he has to play the two games at once. <laughs> and then if we wait, I think it's another 30 seconds. Another one will come up. And another one. And another one. Until there are eight on screen. And you're playing eight separate one button mini games all at once. <laughs> <laughs> so for the one down the bottom you just press the button to change direction it auto fires <laughs> so yeah this one um, I started making little mini games in lectures in my first semester of uni I think it was and I actually hated the game I hated the um, doing all the little mini games at once <laughs> munch is a little bit like, bit like Pac-Man um, but all my friends, all my uni friends, really loved the idea of doing all the mini-games at once. So I decided against my better judgment, this is where it actually goes against what I was saying about taking uh, feedback, um, I decided to keep progressing and making the game. 
And as I said, it is uh, the best uh, performing as far as number of plays game that I've made so far. <laughs> it's okay, you've only got three more games to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to mash one of the <laughs> But see, that doesn't work because there's ones where if you mash it, then you'll do it wrong. <laughs> Um, no, there is no lose point. The worst one is the car game, where that's the only one that takes away points. All the rest just add points. It was a design decision of mine to actually make sure that there wasn't a way to get into negative points. And um, the only game that I couldn't figure out a way of having a pen... Uh, yeah, the car one had a penalty built in, and I couldn't think of another way to just fix that without having to take away points. All the rest of them, it's literally just um, you gain points and you always gain points. <laughs> so yeah, this one I think by itself has had uh, 120,000 plays That's at least. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, was on the front page of Newgrounds for five days. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, once uh, the last game runs for 30 seconds, that's the end. And then there's also a mode where you can just play the individual games by themselves and set a high score in those. Again, more like all my games, um, this yep, is tied into Congregate High School. <coughs> by the time I got to that eighth game, I was really running out of ideas. <laughs> so here's a paddle with balls. Throw them up in the air. <laughs> Um, I had a friend, actually it was a group of friends, who um, they took it turns to play it individually, then they came up with the idea of having two people doing one side each, and they scored worse when they were doing it together. Whether it was because of the limitation of buttons down on the keyboard, or just them being idiots, I'm not sure. <laughs> plug in nine keyboards. <laughs> plug in nine keyboards, that could work. I don't know how that would work with Flash, but it could work. Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, I guess we could play, who wants to play Pew Pew Pew? <laughs> yep. This one's best for me. That's okay. So, um, the really average indie game that I made um, during my year off between working and going to uni was a side-scrolling shooter called uh, Shmup, which I showed off at Computer Games Boot Camp the first year it was run. Yeah, I finished it. It's up for sale on my website right now. Actually, uh, I think it was free for a little while and then decided uh, I'm going to try and get it into one of those uh, in humble indie game packs, something like that. And so I put the price back up so it would be more enticing to them. <laughs> and so um, I decided that I'd, that game was fairly average. Uh, it's good fun to play. There's a good seed of an idea there, but I didn't let it develop fully enough. Um, and so I decided that I'd have another attempt at making a cut-down version for Flash because my friends kept talking on about me. What are you going to do with Shmup? Please make another one. It's awesome. And so I made this. And um, because of some limitations with how Flixel works, I couldn't get all of the stuff in that I wanted because it ran at too slow of a frame rate, um, especially on the netbook. So I just oh. made this. Um, because I had the general idea of the art already, um, that was pretty simple to implement. But um, beyond that, it took me, I don't know, 10 hours to make, if that. It was just a lot of balancing to try and get the um, curve of uh, hardness um, up. <laughs> Is there a storyline? No. <laughs> Street um, things. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of story, actually. I'm, I'm yes. not a big fan of making stories because I'm not good at it. I just want to create mechanics and see how they work. That is a very average score. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty... Fun? Yes, they do. Um, Congregate pays very, very well. Actually, there was the guy who was just sitting over here, just released a game on Congregate. I will bring it up. Now, none of mine got onto the front page of Congregate. And that is where you really make the money on Congregate. So what they do is you see the ads that um, show up first. So hopefully there will be one show up here. It will make him another 0.01 of a cent. I didn't. So, um, yeah. 
Henry, who was here just before, sitting just over here, um, made this game with two of his friends. And it's on the front page of Congregate, and right now it has, let's see, 66,000 plays. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but based off what I've earned on Congregate, that would make him uh, $45-ish. So it's not great. So what I made from the co uh, culmination of uh, this game and um, Space Defenders um, was $250, just from Newgrounds being on the front page. So yeah, he made this game. Um, it's a really awesome puzzle game with a built-in tutorial system just uh, based on how the game works. And I have finished the game. <laughs> <I'm>, oh, <laughs> my netbook's too slow. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty damn fun puzzle game and you should play it because uh, my friend made it <laughs> and should make him more money and tell him to make more games. <laughs> Wait till later. No, oh, damn it. <laughs> oh. Um, does somebody else want to have a play? Yeah, come on. Then. <laughs> I guess we could do a quick dissection of this game. So, obviously it's a puzzle game. There's the player actor, there's other circles that um, move around or don't move around. Whenever you land on any of them, you die. Uh, but you can move back down and they will keep moving up. So these ones move the direction they point whenever you move up or down. So yeah. They're teasing. <laughs> so yeah, this is really, really good level design. Yeah. Ta-da! Now, the purple ones move down whenever you move up or down. <laughs> Later on, there's ones that move side uh, up or down when you move side to side. Um, no. <laughs> and later on, there's times where you need to move up as one goes down, so you swap positions. Um, as I said, really well designed. I'm very glad that he made it. It's really well made. So this one. What? You need to move up, and you'll swap positions with. Oh. Uh, there you can move down. <laughs> so yeah, using um, stencil and or flixel, depending on your level of uh, programming Ooh. experience, you could easily make games like this and have them up and congregate and may or may not make money, but definitely have a place where you can show them off to friends quite easily. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Not too hot. Oh. It's Down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy! It took me uh, a good three hours to figure out. I'm halfway there. <laughs> Anybody else want to have a try? Oh, you know, play it at home. It's a really, really good game. Um. So yeah. Anybody else have any other questions at all? Yeah, I can do that again. Ta-da! Oh, do you want to see the website? Just the URL. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Links to all my games are there. Um, there isn't anything up for the game that I'm currently making because there's nothing to show off just yet. Yep. Um, when did you start? When, when did you start um, making games or programs? Would have been year eight. I started doing modding, level design for original Quake. And so showing off how old I am, that was uh, 98. 97, sorry. <laughs> Even older. So yeah, did uh, level design for Quake, then did some level design for Half-Life, then level design for Unreal where I worked on some mods. I think one of my maps got into a half-decent mod that I can't remember the name of. Um, yeah, then I went to TAFE and did two games there, and then Industry, where I did three games, then Shmup, and now the Flash games. 
So altogether it's been, what, 13, 14 years? Anyone else? Cool. Well, then, I guess you're free to call in on any other lectures that are still going, because mine went really fast or whatever. Thanks.